Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. You are about to witness an inglorious victory for gearheads, metalheads, fornicators, dirty hand types of all creeds and colors. We are going to take this rigid, dry, no, abrasive cutoff machine. and turn it into a turgid dry cut saw. And this thing's thanks, man. The 56% lighter base. <laughs> Fuck, they go easy on apprentices nowadays. Of course, they don't tell you, your Sherpa still got to schlep around that 200 pound Honda generator or what for. Rigid tool here in America, Norte, is the Homeless Death Spots house brand. It's actually made by TTI Industries, same guys what make the Milwaukee, so there's very many similarities. Of course, why would you reinvent the wheel? You're getting parts from the same places, you know, economies and scale and so forth. Anyway, look at that. Mmm, crusty. Now these, this come with the blade already pre-famulated. Of course, it's the shittiest blade known to man, so went ahead and splurged. Eight Canadian Copex, and got the proper Diablo here. And it's got fiberglass reinforcing in there. You can see it. More skookum, more better. There's a finger lopper. Holy fuck! Jesus Christ. What the fuck? Let's see if we can tighten that up a little or something. For Tom Sacks! Of course, they never tell you you need a three arm Filipino contortionist to get the Jesus thing off. Fucking Christ! Add an insult, Angie. Every jeezless bolt on the cork stuffer is matric. On the bright side, oh, I have a new respect for the king of random. I feel dumb. All thumbs. Two left hands. More like two left feet. For fuck off! Well, you can slow us down, but you can't fuck us over. Got on the gargler there. Went and bought the factory retention tool. Easy as that. Have a gander at that. Feast your eyeballs, well. You can see. Well, folk. Yeah, there we go. You can see the difference in material. Quite a bit thicker, grainier on the cheapo. And laminated here you can see there's a protective kind of a condom on there what for keeping it from flying apart at you Get that one. oh you gotta be fucking shitting me metric oh for I ask you what fucking brainiac Filthy salesman in North America sells a 20 millimeter arbor. A science arbor. What the fuck is even 20 millimeters? <sighs> Proof in the puddings in the cut, and that's the dry cut. Beautiful, even though the blade is starting to get a little worn out. We see some scour in here. Still lovely. Holy fuck, that's hot. This one, yeah. I'm apprentice went at it with a dull beaver. We can see there's some heat build up in the part and, and so forth. And this one tends to wander quite a bit more. So how do we get that blade onto this? Well, this thing's rated for spinema thing and at 1500 ripples, 14 inch blade. We'll leave the surface feet per minute calculation to a later date. This one is 3900 rip them so it's spin them a thing and that so over twice as fast what we need to do is half the speed on this now beautifully about the type of motor on here this is a shunt no series wound 
universal motor. So it'll run on AC or DC. It's got more torque on DC. But the beauty of this is it has the most torque at the low end. So it starts off real grunty. So we'll be able, it's not like one of those cheap compressor motors or whatever. This is the perfect type of electric motor. The universal motor is the perfect type of electric motor for tools under variable loads. So look at the size of Erwa. What we are going to do is we are going to reduce the voltage by half. The Empire of Dirt, she provides, and boy howdy, but good. Check out the legs on that beauty, 120 amperes. Motor doer. All we gotta do now is build the thing. Let's just make sure after sitting for so long that the thing still chooches. Should we put the meter in diode check. Now we just check the polarity. One handed in the dark. Oh, that's how I do some of my best work. Yeah, there we go. Oh, there's the cock for dolly. So this is the positive. That's the negative. Doesn't matter because we're putting AC in there. Same thing with light emitting diodes. They're diodes as well. And we can see in diode check, we'll actually be able to get some of these to light up. Cute little trick. No, that ain't it. Wrong polarity. Only chooch is the one direction. It's a good way to check it. Yoo-hoo. Put a little hair around that. There we go. Party mode. I'm reasonably certain I got the cock for dolly. But just in case I let the smoke out, we're going to limit the voltage with this Variac. This is just a variable transformer. So instead of getting 120 volts worth of Angry Pixies to test, we'll get we'll just change it to about 12. And we're floating the o Smelloscope just because I do make mistakes. Now, if any of you have been watching too many Eastern European YouTube videos and you done lost your mind, if you mess with this, well, first off, you're not allowed to plug stuff like this into the wall. It's, you can't put this on the grid. You're not allowed. So we're experimenting here. I want you to be under no illusions of safety. You start dicking around with this, you're going to light yourself up like a Christmas tree, burn your house down in the process. Okay, you can see it still sparks. Let's try it out. Oh, what the f After a while, however, it starts to grow on you. It gets a little bit therapeutic. There are side effects, however, like your eyebrows might grow together. Contact. Okay, now I'm just going to increase the chooch factor. See a nice AC waveform coming up, hit the trigger, and that's about good right there. Now I got a reasonable facsimile of the universal motor wire around resistor. Not quite, but good for proving the point. Across the load, we are now seeing DC pulses. So we're only getting half the voltage to the motor. Let's see how fast this goes under full chooch. Now the interesting thing about universal motors, and I'm gonna explain this in a language, everybody here, that's a thing I find. Guys explain things, and all they wanna do is make themselves look smart. They don't explain shit. So I'm gonna explain this in a language that I can understand so that Hopefully you can understand. Universal motors are grunty on the low end. They got lots of torque. Reason being, at full load, um, there is, well, there's resistance in the, the copper. So there's resistance to current flowing. And there's also impedance due to the magnetics going on. So those two uh, combine together to limit the amount of current going through. Okay, so what happens when we put a universal mo a motor under load is the impedance goes down, it slows down. So the speed slows down, but the current goes up and current is torque. So when we slow down a universal motor like this, it gets more torquey. More torquey, more better. That's why these are so friggin' good for tools. It's the complete opposite for an internal combustion engine. See what I did there? If I'm past the pivot, 
you can't lock it in, it'll tweak off on you. Just the tip and only for a second, mind. So that's the way you clamp a, a short, a little dick end in there. We're forgetting at it. We're going to load this up and see what the speed is at full load. As I was saying, this is the complete opposite of an infernal combustion engine where your torque range, your max torque is at a very specific ripple. So I'll say 3000, depending on how the engine is set up, say 3000 ripples, you get the most torque out of it. This, the slower you're going, the more torque you get out of it. So at full stall, when it's not even moving, it's clamped, that's the most torque you're going to get out of it. And as the ripples come up, the torque drops. Now we're going to run it through a little Guga. I will point out this is on a 20 amp breaker, still busting. So on a 15 amp breaker, you're good luck. I just got the two hands here. It's a disability. Don't judge me. We're going to use the quick release. Oh, maybe I should turn that off. That might be a good idea. And I use the quick release I like chickens tape for safety. That's what the electric chest thing is used, of course, for keeping the end of ones and zeros. And it's red for style. Or two amps, no load. 300 ripples. Something's not right with that setup. We're still getting full speed. Why would that be? I don't understand. Now this, this is interesting. I'm glad I got a head right full of glycogen because we're going to have to put on our thinking caps here. This doesn't work for shit. And that is why they don't have it in tools anymore because it doesn't really do very good speed control at all, just making the half bridge. But the other thing is, if we think about it, not only does it do terrible speed control, it also reduces our torque. Why does it reduce our torque? Well, let me zoom in here. This motor is an inductor. So if we look at the sinusoidal waveform, this is AC. This is the voltage and the current lags the voltage. Okay, so voltage, current into the motor. Now, recall the torque of this is the current. It's one and the same. So what happens when we get rid of half of the current? We also drop half of our torque. So the most torque we're going to get out of this thing is half. And when we put a beefier blade on there, what with teeth and the chewing and so forth, just fucking bad idea all around. Now I might be thick like a tuna can, but I'm also stubborn. Stubborn as an old mule. So this ain't the end. What we're going to do is we're going to use the straight variac. And the variac is a variable transformer. So it's reducing the voltage, but not clipping any of the waveform. That's what we're going to do. We'll limit it to 50% voltage. Still not getting the jam out of her, but we got decent speed control now. Engage your safety squints. We're going to give her about 65 volts. Let her come up to speed and start plunging into the cut.
Okay, as we can see, it is cutting and it appears to be doing nicely. However, it's drawing 35 amps. And I don't know if you can smell it, but I sure can. Something is it getting hot. As a wide high country bumpkin that I is, there you have it. It ain't gonna work. I thought it would work. I thought I could get it to chooch, but there's just no way to convert one of these abrasive cutoff saws into one of these dry cut saws on account of even if we slow it down, we prematurely cook the motor because there's a double whammy there. It's spinning less fast. That means less airflow. That means more heat. Also, we're getting, we're pulling 35 amperes. Now you're saying to yourself, well, how can you do that? That's bullshit because the 20 amp breaker would blow. But recall it's going through that transformer so we can actually draw up to 40 amps out of that. Problem is this thing gets hot. You're not gonna get any longevity of it. Now, if in your completely out of your mind, you could put this blade on here and run it real fast, way over its rating. Is it gonna fly apart? Probably not, but let me tell you, partner, hell of a pucker factor there. I mean, you wanna keep your sphincter in shape. You just run that saw. I have seen it. I've seen it and it's cringy as fuck. You get about two or three decent cuts before it chowders the carbide right to fuck. Because of course, these are rated for a certain surface uh, feet per minute cutting rate. And even at the 1500 on the other saw, it's way too fast. You know, you may be cutting, should be cutting 300 feet per minute max on carbide. We're running at like 4,000. It's just, it's completely out of control. And then just chowders the fuck right out of these. So, you know, if you want, uh, <laughs> if you want a two or two hundred dollar cut, yeah, go ahead. You're taking your life in your hands. But we'll get into that another time, and maybe just touch on why Milwaukee doesn't make that dry cut saw anymore. They took it off the market. I think I know why. We'll get into that the next time. Thanks for watching. Sorry, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't magic up a solution for you. There is no shortcut. Keep your dick in a vice.